What's going on everybody? This video we are going to be talking about working with nested data for MongoDB through Mongoose. So this is basically just a change to your schema, but if you've never really worked with nested data or you're coming from a relational database background, it might be a little strange or a little bit of a learning curve, but it's really not bad. I do want to give a special thank you and shout out to the sponsor of this video, Ultra Edit. Ultra Edit is a text editor that we've been using in this series with lots of customizable features. You can see some of them listed here. You can set this application up to work exactly as you need with many different capabilities. So if you are interested in this customizability, then check out the link down below to support this channel. All right, so here we are in our database. We have one customer in our customer's collection. And when we edit this, we have the ability to add, if you click this little plus, you can add a field after name. And let's just go with an example. They have some orders. And the value for this could be an object where an object can have multiple attributes. So now we can do the same thing. We could have a description for that order, which could be a string. And let's go ahead and add a field after this, which might be, say, the amount in cents. I've kind of grown to like using cents for money. So this would be a different type. Uh, you could use decimal 128 and just use dollars as well. But I'm just going to go with int64 here. So let's go ahead and say that Papa John's personally purchased a MacBook Pro from me. And the amount for this was 100,000 cents, which I believe is like $1,000. Not bad. So there is our new object. We can update that. And there we go, we now have an orders, which is an object. What if we wanted to take this one step further and have multiple orders? Well then, instead of this being an object, it would be an array. So we can edit this and change this from an object to an array, which kind of screwed up our data, but it's all good. Same concept here, instead of this being a string, we would make this an object and then do the same exact thing. So now you can have multiple orders. Description, MacBook Pro, amount in cents, and we'll go with 100,000 there. And then we'll go ahead and add a, instead of add field after amount in cents, if you go up to the zero, index zero, you can say add item after zero, and that's going to add a new index. So it's going to be the same concept. So instead of this being a string, we'll change this to an object and clearly doing all this by hand is quite annoying so once we have our code written out it'll be a lot easier so we also sold papa john some garlic sauce for their ingredients we sell everything and we'll go ahead and add a field which will be amount and this is going to cost them a hundred bucks and then update all right sweet so now when we get our customers you can see this is what the data looks like. If we wanted to update this data in the database, basically we would start by copying this object, pasting that here, and then going in here and changing any data. Let's just say instead of a MacBook Pro is actually a MacBook Air, my bad. Probably didn't know that until after I sold it to him though. Get wrecked. And then change this to put. Go ahead and hit send. And when we look at the response here, it seems like all of the orders disappeared. So when you manually add those orders to the database and retrieve them through our API, it works because it just goes and accesses whatever's in the database and displays it through the API. But when we're actually updating data or doing pretty much anything else, the orders are kind of unknown to the application. So what we need to do is we need to go into our schema and add that structure and say what type everything is supposed to be. Remember, Mongoose is basically the mapper from MongoDB to JavaScript objects. So we need those to be in sync. So head over to our customer.js and here we have a name and an industry. Well, now what we can do is we can go in here and we can add another attribute, which is going to be the orders. This is going to be defined as an array, which you can do with square brackets. And inside of this array, you can define an object. So it might look like this. Here we go. And now we'll define the attributes for what this object might look like. We can have a description, which it will say is a type string. And then we can have amount 
incense, which will be number. So give this a save. And additionally, you will want to check over your app.js wherever you are saving that data to the database. In our case, it was the put, but you also probably want to check your post method. You will want to confirm that the data that you are using to save to the database is the entire request body and not just select attributes. If it's select attributes, then you'll need to go in and manually add any of the ones you want added. So this one looks good. We're just going to take the entire request body and then let's check the post method as well. Scrolling through here, you can see that here and we are creating a new customer with the request body. That means now when I send this data in theory, we should get the entire object back from the database. Perfect. So yeah, it looks good. Let's go ahead and try adding one. So we'll go to post. Uh, let's give this guy a new name. We'll seize also in the industry of pizza. Although now that I'm thinking about it, Lil C would be a pretty cool child name of mine. Anywho, let's go ahead and sell Little Caesars themselves some junk. We sold them some cheese. That's a good price and garlic sauce. Send. Oh, snap. Oh, that's because we still have the ID on there that I copied over, so we don't need that crap. Get rid of that junk. Hit send. The ID here is like stuck, so I don't know what's going on. Let me just make a new request. I don't know what I'm doing, okay? So I will post this data and confirm that it goes in the database. Looks good. So we should now be able to get all of the customers, and there we go. Taking a quick peek at the database, we'll do a refresh. We can see this data and you can expand any one of these. So we'll go into orders and you can see the data here. Also good to note that there is an ID on that nested object, which is really handy because basically now we can identify that order by an ID. So that's pretty cool. So if you wanted to update this specific order, you can do it by ID and we'll check out the other one down here as well. Cool. I love it. That's all I got in this video. In the upcoming video, we're going to talk about a very important method called patch, which you'll often see when you want to update just parts of an object instead of copying the whole object and changing it. So stay tuned for the next video. It's pretty important. I'll see you there. Peace out.